In this video, I'm going to share three ways to use a sauna to get health and fitness benefits, specifically to improve cardiovascular health, to improve general health, and to increase growth hormone, which can then in turn increase muscle mass and strengthen bones. All pretty impressive things just from relaxing in a sauna. And that last one about growth hormone is the one I'm most excited about. And I'll tell you about what's happened to me as a result when we get to that part. Before we start, a note to say that I'm not a professional in sauna therapy. This is me sharing what I've learned and what's worked for me. So I'm hoping it might help others too. The first protocol or procedure or whatever you like to call it is using a sauna to improve cardiovascular health. I got this one and the other protocols from the Huberman Lab podcast, which I've linked in the description. And it's a really great podcast. For improving cardiovascular health, use a sauna at a temperature of between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius. Use the sauna for between 5 and 20 minutes, 2 to 3 times a week. However, this can be done 7 days a week if you want. Studies have shown that the more regular a sauna is used, the more benefits for cardiovascular health. But of course, be sensible with this information and don't go mad and sit in there for hours at a time. 5 to 20 minutes for each session is enough. Studies have shown that by using a sauna in this way, it can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. Basically, using a sauna is linked to longevity. And a 21-year study of 2,315 men showed that using a sauna two to three times a week had a 23% reduction in cardiovascular disease. And using a sauna four to seven times a week had a 48% reduction in cardiovascular disease. And those numbers are massive all from just sitting in a sauna, having a nice time and not really doing much. And this works because as the body warms up, it causes an increase in the heart rate and blood circulation, and that mimics moderate aerobic exercise. So although using a sauna is not a direct replacement for exercise, it is a good alternative. In short, visit a sauna five to 20 minutes as often as you can, and you'll get plenty of cardiovascular health benefits. Before moving on to the next protocol, then be safe and be responsible when using a sauna. Stay hydrated and don't push beyond your tolerance. And if you're unsure whether you should be using a sauna, then speak to your doctor. The next way to use a sauna is for improving general health. And I've got this one from the Huberman Lab podcast as well. For this, ideally use the same temperature as before, which is 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. And use a sauna for a total of one hour a week. And that's not all in one go, but separated over two to three sessions. So this is kind of similar to the previous one, but also a bit different. Using a sauna in this way can give improvements with aches and pains, sleep, mood, and cardiovascular health like before. So basically, this one hour a week is our one-stop shop for our overall health needs. And a tip for the best time to use a sauna. The afternoon or evening time is great as it helps prepare the body for sleep. Do you use saunas regularly? What benefits do you get? Maybe you're tempted to start as a result of this video. Let me know in the comments as I'm sure other people will read the comments looking for inspiration. The final protocol and the one that I'm most excited about is the one that increases growth hormone and this can then increase muscle mass and strengthen bones. And I've had great results with this one and I'll tell you about that in a minute. For these growth hormone sauna sessions, my mum joins me each week and we drive about visiting local gyms and spas because we don't have a sauna in our local town. I've been doing this protocol for about eight weeks and my absolute dream is to have a proper sauna and an ice bath in my house. I mean, I do have that now, but it's a sauna tent and a wheelie bin. And actually they both work great. So if like me, you don't have a sauna near you, but you still wanna try all of this stuff, then I've got a really good alternative that you can use at home. I've got this portable sauna tent it's not a traditional sauna, it's infrared, so it doesn't need steam or any ventilation. And it is brilliant. It gets so hot and I sweat buckets when I'm in there. I've made a separate video about this, showing you around the product and how it works. And I've put that on my Extra Bitch channel. And I've not been paid to say this, by the way. I'm just sharing what I've found useful. It costs about £300 and is an absolute bargain for all the health benefits. Moving on to protocol three, and that's using a sauna to stimulate growth hormone. A few months ago, I had an extensive blood analysis and it showed that I was extremely low on muscle mass. Now, just to let you know, when I talk about muscle mass, this isn't to do with the way that my body looks or even the way that it performs. This is about my long-term health because it's shown that having a good amount of muscle mass 
can then reflect on having good long-term health. The coach that I've been working with has put me on a new exercise and eating plan to get me back in good health and help increase my muscle mass. And you can watch that video here. And as part of my plan, Phil recommended that I do sauna therapy. And this is where my research for this video started. There's a few ways that you can use a sauna for increasing growth hormone. And the first one is from the Huberman lab. No surprise there then. This is ideally done in a semi-fasted state. So leave two to three hours between eating and doing this. This protocol requires doing multiple sauna sessions in one day. So you'll need quite a bit of time for it, but the benefits are worth it. It's 30 minutes in a sauna, followed by five minutes out to cool down. Then repeat that again, 30 minutes in, then five minutes out. Then a few hours later, repeat that all again, 30 minutes in, five out, 30 in, five out. It's an absolute monster session. A total of four lots of 30 minutes in the sauna in one day. But with that comes an increase of 16 times growth hormone. And it's the fact that the body is heating up cooling down, heating up, cooling down multiple times throughout the day, that it releases that. And this is a once a week procedure or less. So anywhere between seven and 10 days, because if it's done any more than once a week, then the body doesn't actually release as much growth hormone. And at this point, if you're thinking, well, why do I need growth hormone? I'm not a bodybuilder. Growth hormone starts to decrease over the age of 30 and even more so for women during the menopause due to a decrease in hormones. So by stimulating growth hormone, it can help maintain a strong and healthy body. It's also great for recovery from exercise and repairing from injury. And given my specific goals right now of increasing muscle mass and improving my bone density, then this protocol is ticking all the right boxes for me and it's working great, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And also with all of these protocols, what a great thing for us to do as well, taking time for ourselves to relax and take care of our bodies. That four lots of 30 minutes is quite intense and also it's gonna take quite a lot of time. So if you need to, you can cut it shorter and I have got some alternatives for you. You can always work up to it over several weeks as the body gets acclimatized to the heat. I got these two from the Tim Ferriss book, Tools of Titans. So you can go in a sauna at 80 degrees, which is 176 degrees Fahrenheit, do two lots of 20 minutes, separated by a 30 minute break, and this elevates growth hormone by two times. Or you can go in a sauna of 100 degrees Celsius, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, do two lots of 15 minutes, separated by a 30 minute break, and this elevates growth hormone by five times. Now I'll admit, I do a bit of a mixture of all of these, mainly because I haven't got the availability to do the first one. And we do 20 to 30 minutes in the sauna, depending on the temperature. And then we do five to 10 minutes out. And then we repeat that three times, sometimes four. And this three times 30 minutes procedure wasn't outlined in the podcast or any of the books that I've read, but it's kind of a compromise between the previous three. And it's only my guess that would be getting something like five to 12 times increase in growth hormone, which I'm happy with that. It's a bit of a monster session. And by the third session, I start getting a bit agitated. You know, that feeling where you want to get out. And I recently learned that that's got something to do with dynorphine being released into the body. It's important to listen to that feeling as each person has got a different tolerance to heat. And therefore, when dynorphine is released, I stay in for one or two minutes beyond that feeling and then I get out. And Mama T, who's 77, absolutely bosses the sessions. She can sit in here for hours and nothing happens. <laughs> Her heart rate stays lower than mine and she deals with it better. In the three months that I've been doing my new eating, exercise and sauna plan, I've gained over three kilograms of muscle and increased bone density, which obviously isn't just from using the sauna, but it's a combination of the high protein meals, intense weight training, and doing the once a week sauna protocol, with the sauna definitely acting as a catalyst for the other two. I'd like to know which of the sauna sessions would you like to try? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.